Hi, I'm Heather Thanaseu with Community in Crisis, and we're here presenting Vape Free, Breathe Free. Um, this is webinar five of our little mini series, and I'm here with my daughter, Maddie Athanasiu, an Univer University of Indiana student. She's helping us out today. Um, so let's get started. So um, when it comes to COVID and vaping, this is sort of a recipe for disaster because when you think about the mechanics of vaping, you're touching something and then putting it in your mouth. And that's, you know, your hand germs and it's going directly to your mouth. And um, when it comes to vaping, a lot of people will just sort of hit each other's jewels or share vaping devices. And so this sort of creates the perfect storm in terms of spreading COVID and contracting it while vaping. So Dr. Winkoff, who's the Director of Pediatric Research at the Tobacco Research and Treatment Center, this is New um, Massachusetts General Hospital, he said there's COVID-19 virus particles can be exhaled in the aerosol. So if you're somebody who's vaping and you're um, not showing symptoms, but you're infected, you could be exhaling virus particles in that aerosol. Um, they also see, they see increased coughing in patients who vape or smoke, and that can increase the risk of spread, whether that's to healthcare workers or family around you. Um, so again, that's one more reason to be concerned about mm -hmm. COVID-19 and maybe being a smoker or somebody who vapes. So this is really a shocking thing to learn about for me because what do these people have in common? Well, we have a group of senior citizens, um, a teenager with a cigarette and a cancer treatment patient. And the surprising answer is that they're all immunocompromised and at a high risk for having severe um, side effects and issues when it comes to COVID-19. Um, and that's because they're immunocompromised. A smoker, a teenager like me, I could be, if I was a smoker, I could be in the same boat as my 85 year old grandpa when it comes to contracting COVID and the risks that come with that. Um, and that was really shocking to think about. So, and if you're somebody who vapes, we don't have, vaping hasn't been around as long as smoking. So we don't have studies to prove that vapors are at the same high, high risk. Um, but it's not looking good for vapors. Um, because of, we, we have proof from all these cases that were in the news last year, the end of last year and over the winter, thousands of people and a lot of young people hospitalized, um, placed in medically induced comas, put on ventilators because their lungs were so severely inflamed that they couldn't exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide normally by themselves. Machines had to do that. So these cases of um, what the CDC called um, e-cigarette and vaping associated lung injury, they're proof that vaping can cause inflammation and very serious inflammation. Um, and that stuff affects the normal functioning of our natural defense um, mechanisms that are in our lungs. Um, going back to Dr. Winkoff again, he was especially concerned about um, inhaling smoked or vaped marijuana, so cannabis. Um, this has been, this is shown to damage lung cells, may increase virus replication, and it does affect the ability of the body to fight off infection. Um, so we have Dr. Albert Rizzo, who's the chief medical officer from the American Lung Association, um, shared these statements. And this is sort of generally accepted by, you know, leaders in the government and people that are in charge of looking out for America's health. So our Surgeon General, the Centers for Disease Control. Um, this is sort of the general consensus that smoking and vaping cause harm to the lungs and leave tissue inflamed, fragile, and susceptible to infection. So tobacco smoke and vape emissions, um, in our previous webinars, we've talked about a lot of the really harmful, toxic, and sometimes cancer-causing chemicals that are found in the aerosol mm -hmm. that vapors are inhaling. Um, those things can affect the function of the lung's natural defense mechanism. So this makes it harder, it may make it harder for the body to fight off respir respiratory viruses like COVID and sets up the risk for more serious COVID-19 complications. So if your lungs are already pissed off because you've been smoking mm -hmm. or vaping and then you're hit by COVID-19, um, you're probably going to have more serious, you're more likely to have more serious problems as a result of that. So it's time. Mm -hmm. um, quitting smoking and vaping can better equip your body to fight off this disease and reduce the chance of the most severe symptoms. And um, that's why we're here today. 
So if you or someone you know is looking to quit and get started on that, we have three great resources that we're going to get into um, in a second and during this presentation, Smoke Free Gov, um, Quick Start App, and the You Got This Text Ditch Jewel to 88709 for help. And these are all found on communitycrisis.org, which we'll take you to in a second. We're going right now. So we're switching gears a little bit and we're taking you over to communitycrisis.org to our website because um, you can find all of this information there. Um, so from our homepage, if you go to our focus, you'll see um, vaping hashtag quit for COVID. And under there, there's a lot of information that we just discussed, but with more sort of backup. So if you want to dive a little deeper into why somebody who's vaping or smoking might have an increased risk um, associated with COVID, that information's here. Um, also down here, we have, you know, given the current stay at home mandates, um, some young people might be finding themselves experiencing symptoms of withdrawal if they're not able to get their usual stuff, or some people may have decided to quit because of COVID or for other reasons. Um, we tried to give a lot of reasons for maybe wanting to quit in our earlier webinars. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're going to switch over to the um, quit resources that we've um, talked about as Part of this second part of this webinar. Um, so we're, we're clicking here on quick start for these quick resources and there's three main ones that we're gonna talk about. And before we dive into them, I want you to know that um, we, I personally am, and I'm, I'm a veterinarian, I'm not a like a cessation specialist or somebody that works in the addiction field, but I love science and I've, um, I love kids and was really concerned about what was going on in our schools and so that's why I got involved with community in crisis and the more I learned the more I realized well people need more information out there parents and students and um, so I've done a lot of research research in this area and on these resources and the ones that we're recommending here are proven to have helped millions of people already quit smoking and some to quit vaping um, so I want you to know that this is evidence-based um, recommendations that we're um, putting out there for you mm -hmm. and there are a lot of other great resources out there but these are the ones that we felt might resonate most with um, especially younger people and people who vape. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with, we've got three resources and the first one is um, smokefree.gov and we're going to click on that and go right to their website and check that out with you. So smokefree.gov is sort of neat in that they have a lot of different options here. Um, if you're a smoke free vet or there's smoke free women, we're going to focus on smoke free teen here. Um, the reason we went with this website over other ones that are also good um, is because they have a special section that is um, quit vaping, you know, so it's all in vaping language and mm -hmm. seems a little more relatable for um, teens, especially. Um, so we're going to spend a little time looking at this and um, so so there's a lot of things that you're going to do. You're, you're going to if you can spend just like half an hour or 40 minutes learning a little bit about the process and the challenges you're going to run up against, you're going to be a lot more likely to be successful with this whole process. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have you learn things about, okay, how do I get started? Um, I'm going to get ready to quit. I'm going to need some tools to help deal with cravings and, and triggers. Um, handling hard times. There's going to be a lot of changes in like your moods and stuff when you're going through things and your social life. Like how are you going to handle you know, being around friends eventually when we're let out of our houses. <laughs> How are you gonna deal with those situations um, when you're in situations where you used to smoke or vape? Um, so let's, we're not gonna go through this whole website, but I do wanna look at um, the quit vaping section because I think you'll sort of understand like the value that's here in, um, by spending a little time on this website. Um, so if we go under how to quit vaping, these are just a, couple of things you're 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 going to learn they want it's really important for you to know your particular motivation for wanting to quit it might be i'm scared to death of covid so i'm going to quit smoking because you know i don't want to get sick i'm older and i'm smoking um for other people it might be like i'm tired what are, what are some reasons younger people might want to quit they can't run up the stairs without getting out of breath which is not something that should be happening to a 17 year old that kind of stuff 
Yeah, vaping has affected a lot of athletes' performances. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're tired of spending like fifteen hundred to four thousand dollars a year on this stuff. There's a lot of different reasons. Maybe you just want to be healthier, um, but it's important to identify those particular reasons for you because that's going to be part of your motivation through the the tougher times. Um, they'll have you set a quit date. Um, they haven't shown any um, advantage over quitting cold turkey or setting a quit date that's a little bit down the road, but they do know that if you pick a date that's say two months down the road, that's way too long and a lot of people never get around to doing it. So they do say if you're going to wait a little bit, they say maybe a week or two is the longest you should go before um, before setting a date mm -hmm. because you're more likely to stick with it. And I like that idea because it gives you a chance to sort of look at this website, look at these tools and get set up to, to do this and do it right. Mm -hmm. So take some time and get prepared. Um, you'll be, if, as you go through this website, like this is know what challenges to expect. There's going to be triggers, there's going to be cravings, mm -hmm. there's nicotine withdrawal. The withdrawals um, are usually the most intense, those first like one to three days, and then those will gradually decrease over three to four weeks. And um, the cravings that you feel can, those will also be the most intense. You know, those first couple of days can be the most difficult. And those tend to weaken and become less frequent, um, gradually decreasing over three to four or one to three months. So it's a little bit longer for those cravings mm -hmm. to go away completely. This is just an example of some of the information you'll gain. If you sort of know what you're gonna be up against, you can prepare your family, you can prepare like, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start exercising more that week. I'm gonna make sure I get more sleep. Um, those are all things, exercise is something that sort of naturally builds up the good horm hormones in your body mm -hmm. um, that make you feel good. They decrease stress, which is, everybody's more stressed out because of COVID. Mm -hmm. If you're qu trying to quit your, um, you know, quit vaping or smoking, you're going to be more stressed out. So anything you can do in your life that helps bring the stress down is going to help with that process. Um, so, so knowing those challenges and having a plan for how to deal with them is really going to help increase your success. Um, again, imagine yourself vape free or smoke free. Um, having something positive to focus on. A lot of times they'll have you sort of write the reasons down or, or like those things you're really looking forward to about being vape free or smoke free and posting that in your room or someplace where you spend a lot of time as your inspiration. It's important to build your team. Um, like if you were gonna go, if, if you're somebody who's gonna quit smoking or vaping, um, you are gonna have probably mood swings. You're not going to be mm -hmm. a pleasant person to be around sometimes. <laughs> um, it could be like perpetual teenager forever. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Um, no. So if you, if you, if you just decided to, let's say you just decided to vape and didn't tell your family you're going through this and then you're just like a bear to mm -hmm. live with, you know, they might not react very positively to that and not be very supportive. But if you let them know, Hey, like, I really want to do this. This is something that I'm going to be taking on and I'm, it might be hard on you for a while, but I really appreciate your support and understanding mm -hmm. through this. Then when you're raging or sort of not being that pleasant to, to be around, you might actually find them sort of lifting you up through that time and, mm -hmm. and helping you through it because you've brought them into the loop on things. Mm -hmm. um, and friends, you know, you definitely want to enlist the support of friends, even if they decide if they're vaping or smoking and decide not to join you in that, you know, if they're a true friend, they should still support your choice to be vape free mm -hmm. or smoke free. Um, there was a really cool, like Dr. Seuss quote that was shared as one of the inspirations in, on this website. And it was like, those who do you remember matter that? don't mind and those who mind don't matter. Yeah. Very, very mm -hmm. well. And most importantly, these people <clears throat> are gonna hold you accountable. It's like starting a diet. When you start a diet and you tell people around you, they're gonna be like, why are you eating that? aren't you on a diet kind of thing. It's good to like have those people holding you accountable and raising your standards for yourself. Yeah, so so that is just one little section of this website and you've already, you know, already learned that you need to enlist the help of your family. Getting more sleep mm -hmm. is helpful. Um, I need to learn how, to, I need to have a plan for my cravings and my triggers. 
Um, so this website is going to help walk you through those things and help you go through those steps um, and, and, I, and deal with things. And also just having information, just knowing, you know, everybody I think knows that there's going to be withdrawal symptoms, but knowing like, okay, here's when those end. Here's when those usually mm -hmm. end for most people. Or um, some cravings last a very short time. Some are like 10 to 20 minutes. Sometimes they're longer for other people, but just knowing, okay, there's going to be an end to this and I just have to keep myself busy or distracted or, you know, get moving to go talk to somebody just to get through that craving. That's helpful. So knowledge is power mm -hmm. and there's a lot of information here. All right. So that's the first resource, uh, teen, what, teensmokefree.gov. Now, the second resource we want to show you guys is um, a texting service. Basically, you text Ditch Jewel to 88709. And these are just daily texts that'll keep you moving in the right direction in terms of quit your, your quit. Um, and they're going to be really like informal. They're sort of like a friend almost talking to you and texting you and just sort of encouraging you. But it's not just encouragement. It also has like, it's a, it's customizable. So the interface is really interactive. Like it'll say, Oh, are you, did you have a slip today? Text slip if you did. And if you did, if you happen to hit your jewel that day, um, it'll text you back with either like encouragement, but also like tips as to how you, that can't happen again, or, you know, what can you do to sort of avoid those triggers, those trigger situations, those cravings. Um, you can text them crave if you're having a craving and they'll help you sort of like get through that without, you know, succumbing to it. And it's a really easy to use interactive interface. And it's just a great little way to sort of get those reminders. <clears throat> like even when you're not thinking about it, if it's just like on your phone, you pick up your phone and you see that you just sort of reminds you to stay on it and stay um, with the quit. Just like a, a daily nudge. Mm -hmm. If And just to go back to, so that is Ditch Jewel. And we, we went with this one again, because our audience is, <laughs> you know, we're targeting the teen kids who are vaping. Um, if you're a smoker and you go back to um, smokefree.gov, they have the same kind of thing for smokers. Um, if you vape, you can use this one also. I think this gives you like three messages a day versus one with like Ditch Jewel. Um, but or sign up for both of them if you want. But we just wanted you to know that this is more sort of smokers language. And the other one that we chose for our resource page has to, is Ditch Jewel because it was more sort of vapor's language. But use one of them, use both of them mm -hmm. if you want, but both great resources and just a little nudge of inspiration throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So that's the second resource. And then our third one is the Quick Start app. And so this is a really great app to have on your phone. Um, so, you know, the first and second resources were more of like quit tools. This is like a quit kit almost. It's sort of like, um, it has everything you need in one small app. It has, you know, I'm craving, what do I do? Oops, I slipped. Um, buttons for like when you're feeling down, you're feeling great. You know, it'll give you sort of messages of encouragement or messages of what you can do to be better. Um, distract me button, which is great for if you're having a craving. It has games that you can play to sort of distract you. Um, and it's also super customizable in a sense that you enter sort of like, oh, I'm an 18 year old girl who has cravings in the morning really heavily. And then it'll send you a lot of stuff in the morning to help you to, you know, stay on top of it, stay motivated. Um, and it's really helpful way to sort of have it on, have a, like a tool on you at all times. Cause we all have our phones on us at all times. Um, and it's really great for made for people who want to quit smoking. Um, so it's all in smokers lingo, but it can use it for um, vaping. It's very easy to use. Yeah, whether you're well. trying to quit nicotine because you vape or smoke, it's the same mm -hmm. techniques that you need to use. And so just be aware of that. This is smokers language for if those of you who are vaping and trying to quit. And the one thing I'd say too is <clears throat> one of the questions the app might ask you is like, how much do you smoke a day? So if you're doing you know, we know that one jewel pod is about equal to 20 cigarettes or one puff bar is equal to about 20 cigarettes. So um, if it says like, you know, how many cigarettes did you vape this week? Just put that into pod terms. Mm -hmm. If it's, you know, three pods that week, then change it into the number of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So that's information you might need to know for using this app, but one pod or one puff bar equals about 20 cigarettes worth of nicotine. Mm -hmm. Um, so now we'll go back to this main page. So those are the 
three great resources, three great places to start mm -hmm. your quit if you're ready to jump in now or if you want to, you know, take a week and get, you know, sort of go through the website, get educated and sort of plan things out and then start your quit that week. Um, these are great resources for you to use that. We do want you to be aware that there are many other options out there. So if you want other options, you can click here. And I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but um, on our website, there's two different texts. And there are actually more than this, but these are two great text support options. Become an X is another awesome uh, website. It's all smokers language, and we just want you to know that. But if this doesn't really sort of click with your personality or, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense, doesn't seem as intuitive, try one of the other websites. We recommended the Quit Start app, but there are, there's Quit Guide. There are probably over 15 different Quit apps out there. Some might be just more like games and maybe they're not evidence-based, but maybe they are fun for you and they help you. Mm -hmm. So if this doesn't resonate with you or work for you, try something else, but just keep moving forward. So you'll see there are quit lines you can call. Um, some people really struggle with, lots of people struggle with quitting and have quit multiple times or been trying to quit their whole lives smoking. Um, and in-person group meetings like has been proven to increase the likelihood of success. So if you're finding that, hey, trying to do it on your own isn't working, um, be aware that Robert Wood Johnson has a quit center that's available. We've really struggled to have mm -hmm. resources available for younger people and that's finally becoming available and they're starting to offer things in terms of Zoom meetings too. So know that that's here. Um, parents can get information if they have kids that are trying to quit or kids that maybe aren't ready to quit but parents want to get information and know how to maybe nudge them in that direction or support them. So great information on becomeanx.org for parents. Parents can sign up for the quit, you know, get daily nudges also. Um, and the one last thing that um, we should tell you about is some people need nicotine replacement therapy to help them through those really intense sort of first, you know, couple weeks of cravings and nicotine withdrawal. It depends on the individual and perhaps on the amount that you've been um, vaping. So nicotine replacement therapy, things like the patches or like nicotine lozenges are something that enable you to gradually bring down the amount of nicotine in your system while you're dealing with all the other mm -hmm. sort of changes in your lifestyle to be nicotine free. So just know that um, teenagers are not little adults and you don't just follow the same guidelines for, you know, a 16 year old as you would for an adult. So there's these guidelines were just released from um, um, earlier this year. So you can download those here and share them with your pediatrician and get going that way. Um, so hopefully you've gotten a lot of information today about some great resources that are readily available mm -hmm. and, um, you know, have been designed with teenagers and smokers and vapors in mind. Mm -hmm. So we're really fortunate in this day and age that you can have all of this great information and these tools and tips right in the palm of your hand. Um, so remember that millions of people have already quit. If you're a younger person who's been vaping, um, you know, or juuling, you're more likely to have an easier time quitting than somebody who's been doing this for 20 years. So quit now. Mm -hmm. You know, COVID is a great excuse to do it. Keeps you safer, keeps your family safer. Um, you're alone now. I mean, one of the advantages of being like having to stay at home is that you're away from all those social triggers, right? Mm -hmm. And other people that were doing it. So being alone might make it tougher for some people to quit. It might be like the perfect time for mm -hmm. others to quit. So anyway, find your inspiration, um, you know, hold on to that and use these resources and we wish you luck in your quit or support, supporting others mm -hmm. around you who are trying to quit. So thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in.